Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a modern vector logo using Inkscape. I'll also be showing you how to create a vector icon or like a little vector object to add to your logo using a photo as a reference. I'll be using Inkscape 1.0 which is the latest version of Inkscape at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of Inkscape and GIMP tutorials on here, my GIMP book of layers, and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using some free fonts for this tutorial, including the Adrenaline font here to scroll to the bottom beyond all these little graphics and promos. And there's a little section here where you can add your information and click free download. I'm also gonna be using the cast iron free font here. And here, once again, you can input your information and click free download. Finally, I'll be using this photo of a cleaver. So click free download here. I went with 1280 by 850. Here is the final logo. So this logo is for a hypothetical butchery shop. All of the techniques I'll be showing you for this tutorial are built directly into Inkscape and should be easy enough for beginners to follow. So let's dive in. I'll start by going to File, New. And I'll go to File, Document Properties. I'm going to adjust the units to pixels for my display units and the actual document units. And in this case, I just went with a 1920, actually I believe I went with a 1280 by 720 document. And I'll exit out of here. I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. The first thing I wanna do is add my main piece of text. So I'll grab my text tool and click on my canvas. And with the caps lock key on, I'll type Carver, which is the name of my hypothetical butcher company. Control A to select that text. Then I'll come up top here and the font I wanna use is called cast iron. So I'll type that here, click on the cast iron font. By the way, if you're not sure how to download and install fonts for Inkscape from a third party, I do have a tutorial on that subject. I also know that I want to increase this font. So let's go with 144 and actually I'll go to text, text and font. And I'm just going to increase the size of this to 250 and hit apply. Once I've adjusted the size of my text, I'll grab the select tool and I'm gonna come over to Align and Distribute. You guys can use Shift Control A to open this up or come down here to this little triangle menu and it's right here, Align and Distribute. So while my text is selected, I'll align this relative to page and I'm just going to center align this both vertically and horizontally. So using these two icons here. So now my main text has been aligned. Next, I'm gonna add the ribbon behind the text. So I'll grab the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna start by simply clicking and dragging this tool. And I'm gonna create a nice long rectangle here. I'm also going to use my select tool to select that and come over here and just align this center to my composition, vertically centered. And we can also horizontally align that. I think I just said that in the opposite order, but you guys get the point. So to convert this to a ribbon now, what I'll do is come over and grab my rectangle tool again. And I'm just going to click and drag my rectangle while holding the control and shift keys. That'll drag this out from the center and it'll keep this as a one-to-one -one square. And once I have approximately the size I want, I'll release. So I'm not measuring this based on any particular size, but I do want this to be slightly larger than the rectangle we drew here. And what I'll do with this now is come over here to my select tool, click on this to bring up the rotation handles and holding the control key, I'm gonna rotate this until it turns into a diamond. Then I'm going to click and drag this over here. And what I'm doing is just dragging this until it basically covers up the endpoints of the rectangle there, like so. Once I have that where I want it, I'll hit Control D. And then I'm just going to click and drag this. So that duplicated that. And I'm gonna drag this over to the other side until the same thing happens. So right there, it's covering up the endpoints. Now what I'll do is click on our first diamond and shift click on the rectangle. Then I'll go to path difference. And there you'll see this now creates a nice ribbon look and I'll have to do the same on the other side. So I'll shift click 
So I have both of these objects selected now, and we'll go to, once again, Path Difference. I do want to change the color of this, so I'll go with something like a light gray color. And finally, I want to move this behind the text, so I'll come over here and click on the lower selection to bottom icon, and then just come over here to the alignment dialog and make sure that is center aligned. So the full name of this hypothetical business is the Silver Carver Butcher, so I do need to add those extra lines of text. The top line, which is the silver, is going to be in the same font as the main text. So I'll come over here and grab my text tool and up top, click and with my caps lock key on, I'll type the silver, control A to select all the text, come up top here and once again, I'll type cast iron, grab my select tool, and I'm just going to hold control while I click and drag this to make it larger, like so. And by the way, if you haven't noticed by now, the key to a modern logo looking good is obviously in the fonts that you choose. So I do recommend spending some time looking for the fonts that you want and making sure that they look good, especially as they're working together with other fonts in the logo. So I'll come over here, grab my text tool again, and I'm going to select all the text. I do want to space the letters out a bit here so I can come up top here to this little icon and it says spacing between letters. So I'm just going to increase the spacing until the letters are sufficiently spaced. I'll probably go with just 10 for now. That looks pretty good. I'll grab the select tool, come over here and just center align this. And I want this text to be the same color as my ribbon. So first I'm actually gonna click on the ribbon. I just wanna lighten this up a bit more like so. Then I can click on my text with the select tool, grab the eyedropper and then click on that ribbon text and now this text is the same color. Now I'll add the last line of text, which is the word butcher. So I'll grab my text tool, click on here. With the caps lock key off this time, I'll type butcher. Control A to select everything. And this time I know my font is going to be adrenaline, which is right here. You can always preview all the other fonts if you want to look for a different font to use. But I'll go with adrenaline. I do like the way the script text goes with the more rigid text here. And I'll hold control and just drag this outwards so that it doesn't warp the text here, but also scales it up. So maybe about right here. Click on this again to bring up the transform handles. And this is gonna be the rotate handles. And if I hold the control key, that will rotate this in 15 degree increments. So I'll go right there and then center align this. Click off the text. And actually let me click on the text again and just bring this up a bit and also maybe scale it down a tiny bit. So holding the control and shift keys, that'll scale this from the center and maintain that same aspect ratio. So the last thing I'll do here is click on this text, grab my eyedropper tool and click on the ribbon there so that everything is the same color. Next, I'm going to start adding some different design elements. So let's start with that little icon of the cleaver. We're going to create this icon as a vector object using a rasterized photo, so just a standard photo. So what I'll do is come over here and go to File, New. So here I have my new document. I'm just gonna keep this set to the default settings. It doesn't matter what size this is. But now I'll open up that photo that I downloaded and just click and drag this inside of my new composition. I'll link it and set this to blocky optimized speed because I want this to perform as best as possible and I'll click OK. We're not gonna keep the image in the end so it doesn't matter if it looks blocky in here. So I'm just gonna scale this down so it fits inside the composition. Hold control, zoom in with my mouse wheel. And what I'll do is come over here so you'll see I have the objects window open right now. If you want this open, go to object, objects and then I can lock down this image here. Then I'll come over and grab my Bezier Curves tool or the Paths tool, hold Control and zoom in, and I'm just going to click to create a node there and then click and drag my mouse to create a curve. And you can always shift click and bring this handle in and that keeps that curve from getting too out of control there. And I'm just going to outline this entire object. And finally, I'm going to connect my last node to the first node there. 
and that is going to show the outline of my object. So I didn't perfectly outline this, but I did a good enough job to where anybody can recognize this is a cleaver. So I can hide the image and there you can see, obviously it is a cleaver. And finally, what I'll do is just add a little bit of detail to this and I'm not going to overdo the detail. If you make this look too photorealistic, it will detract from the logo and it could be hard to print in the future as well or add to any sort of marketing materials. So what I'll do first is the handle. So I'm just going to click outside here with my pass tool and draw a line right there where the handle ends and just make sure I encircle the entire cleaver. And finally, I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and just draw these little circles on the inside. So if I click and drag while holding the control and shift keys, that's going to create a perfect circle and drag it from the center. And then I'll hit control D once I have a circle and just drag this over here to the next location. And I'll use my scroll bar to move over, control D to duplicate that again and move it over here. So now we have our three circles. Let's move over to this last circle here grab my ellipse tool, click and drag while holding the control and shift keys, and now we have that final circle. So now we need to bring this all together. What I'll do is grab my select tool, and for the four circles, I just want these to be white. So I'll shift click on all four, and then click on my white swatch. Come over here to the handle, I want this to be black, so I'll click on it and make it black, and shift click to get rid of the stroke. And finally, I want this to be that silver we've been using in our logo, or at least close to it. So I'll click on the cleaver, left click on the silver color here, shift click to get rid of the stroke. And the last touch here is to make sure I have the main part of this cleaver selected, shift click on the handle. And finally, I'll go to path, division, and that will get rid of that excess area there on the handle. Now I'll click on the handle and just change the color of this back to black and there you'll see we have our cleaver. So I can hide the image now, we don't need it anymore. I'm going to select everything here and hit Control G to group it. And I do recommend saving this file at this stage in the design process so you don't lose it. So I'll go to File, Save As, I'll just name this Cleaver Icon, hit the Enter key. Now we're going to add this icon to our logo design and finish off the logo. So I'll hit Control C to copy this. I'll then come over and minimize this window to bring up my logo design and Control V to paste. I'll grab my select tool and now I can move this into place. And I'm going to drag the scale handle here, hold the Control and Shift key and just scale this until I like the size of it. So maybe about right there. Come over here to my alignment dialog and click to center align this. Let me make sure this is set to page and click to center align it and click on this text and double check that that is centered to the page. Next, I'm going to create an arch or an arc so that this text can go around the little cleaver icon we created. So come over here and grab my ellipse tool and I'm just gonna hold control and shift while I click and drag this outwards. So I'll go to about right here and release. Then what I'll do is grab my select tool. We can move this circle down a bit and let's move this text up a bit. I'm going to click on my text and then shift click on the circle. And then I'll come over to text, put on path. That will put my text on the circle here. Then I'm just going to click to bring up my rotation handles. And I'm just gonna rotate this so the text is brought around like so. And in this case, it's not doing a perfect job, but that's okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect because now what I'll do is click off of this Click on the text and go to path, object to path. Then I'll click on the circle and delete it. And now I'm just going to bring my text up and click on it to bring up the rotate handles and just rotate this until the text is properly oriented here and release. And then I'll come over to my alignment and just make sure that is center aligned. And now I'm gonna click on the text once again and use my arrow key to just bring this up a bit. Next, I'm going to add the text inside the ribbon. So what I did for this is just grab my text tool, click somewhere on my canvas, and I'm gonna type 20, and Control A to select that. I'm gonna change the font to cast iron. Grab my select tool and just drag this inside of the area with the ribbon. 
and then use the scale handle and the control key to scale this up and then use the arrows on my keyboard to put this in place where I want it. So about right there and then control D because the year obviously is 2020 and hold the control key and drag this over. And then I'm going to shift click so that I select both of these, control G to group them, and then using the alignment tool relative to page, I'm gonna make sure these are center aligned. And I can click off of that. And let me actually just click back on this and use my arrow key to move it down slightly. The ribbon right now is a bit too large, so what I'll do is grab my edit paths by nodes tool, and I'm just going to click and drag this. Let me click on this first, and then click and drag over those nodes and move this inwards using the right arrow key, probably about right there, then grab my select tool and come over and center align this once again. So that shortened up that ribbon there. Finally, I'm going to add the tapered strokes around the butcher lettering. First, I'll hit Control S to make sure that I save my progress. So I'll name this Carver logo, hit the Enter key. So I'll hold Control, zoom in. I'm going to grab my pen tool or my Bezier curves tool and click to create a node, hold the control key, and click to create a straight line. Grab my select tool. Once I have this stroke drawn, I wanna add some path effects to it so that it has that tapered edge. So what I can do is come over here to path effects, or you can go to path, path effects, and there's a little plus icon here, I'm gonna click that. Then I'll scroll down to tapered stroke and click on that. And if I hold control and zoom in, you can see the current effect of this. I want the stroke to be a bit thicker, so I'm gonna change the stroke width to 1.0. Hold control, zoom out to see how that looks. So it looks pretty good. You can also adjust the start and end offset as well as the taper smoothing options. But I'm gonna keep these set to the default and I'm gonna click back on this using my select tool and hit control D. That'll duplicate that tapered stroke. Then what I'll do is click and drag this over using the control key. And once I have this dragged over, I'm gonna come over here and click this icon to flip it. And then I'm going to drag this up and I'll actually drag this one down. And then I'm going to click on this stroke and rotate this holding the control key. So that'll rotate that by 15 degrees. Click on this one, click on it again to bring up the rotation handles. Hold the control key till I get to 15 degrees. And let's just relocate these here like so. Hold the control key and zoom out a bit. So let's do some final touches here. I'm going to shift click on all three of these elements, control G to group them. And I'm gonna use the handle to just scale this down a bit while holding the control and shift keys. And then just move it up a bit. And I'll come up top here, do the same thing here. So control G and I can use the handles to resize this and control shift G to ungroup this. I actually wanna move this up a bit and move the little icon down a bit. And then I'm gonna select everything, control G to group everything, come over to align and distribute and center align this. And there is our final logo. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.